Welcome to Web Ambulatory Training Video 2, Accessing the Patient's Chart. From a clinical home screen, you can access the patient's chart using the schedule and clicking on the patient's name. You can see that the patient November 2 is supposed to be at Act Durham and the patient's status is arrived. Clicking on the patient's name ensures that I access the Act Durham chart. Once I'm in the chart, one thing that you will have to do is check the patient in. So once they've arrived, you can click on the appointment status located in the reference panel. You can click into arrive and change the patient status to exam and close. This will allow you to check the patient in. Upon entering the chart, you will notice that the chart is now segregated into three different sections. You have chart, which will be reflected through these tabs below. You have document, which will allow you to create documentation and orders, which will allow you to create orders. For this video, we are going to review chart only. You also have your compose button here, which will allow you to compose messages. Clicking in the drop down will allow you to either send a clinical message. So if you're sending a message to a peer, you can select the recipient here. Okay. And actually send a message. I can send a message to the primary care provider. Clicking on the save button will send the message. Alternatively, clicking on the compose gave you a second option and that is health portal discussion. This will allow you to send pet messages to your patient via the patient portal. Clicking on save will send the message to your patient. The compose messages is not for anything emergency and is not the, does not replace normal communication. If it's urgent, please make sure you call and, make, and contact the, the responsible provider or call your patient. Under the more button, you also have chart viewer. So this is only available once you are in the patient's chart, and this allows you to create documentation and also toggle the patient's chart at the same time. Clicking on Chart Viewer opens a second window, and this will allow you to view the patient's chart and information while documenting. Notice that I have two instances of the chart open. So I could be in a documentation um, session as well as toggling through the patient's chart and reviewing patient information as I create my documentation. Lastly, you have external application. If you're reviewing the Connecting Ontario information for external labs and et cetera, Clicking on external application will launch you into Connecting Ontario. Now on to widgets. In your summary panel, you will have widgets available to you. For example, you can see scales last documented. If you are creating any documentation for your patient regarding scale, such as the RAS, You'll be able to click on any of these values to see when it was documented, what the value is, and who documented it. If there are multiple instances of this documentation, you can also graph the values. 
The widget is a quick and convenient place for you to view patient information, but your source of truth will always be in the actual documentation. So finding your documentation through provider notes or nurse slash ally will be your source of truth. This is only used for quick references. You'll also see um, legal and consent and capacity and outpatient recovery plan of care available to you. One of the major benefits of widgets is that it'll allow you to actually customize what you're seeing. To do this, you click on the cog wheel and you can change the order of which the widgets that you see. Say for example, you would like to move the crisis prevention plan to the left. You can click on that and push it to the left. If you would like to move it up, you can also leave it highlighted and use the arrows to move your widget. If for example, height and weight is not applicable to you and you don't want to see it anymore, you can click on the X and that will remove that for you. This will customize the widget for your preferences so that when you enter other charts, you will always see widgets like this. If I had removed the height and weight by mistake, I can always add it by searching into the search field and adding the height and weight back. Once I'm done, I can click on save. and you'll see the changes reflected. This button allows you to collapse all of your widgets or expand all your widgets. In your reference region along the right hand side, this will stay consistent throughout your charting. You have your patient's name, age, gender, date of birth, health card number, and MRI number. If the patient's in, um, enrolled in patient portal, you'll see that there is a little icon here. And as you hover above, you can see that the patient's enrolled. You also see the account that the patient's registered to and the visit date. The search chart function allows you to search in the chart for any pertinent information that you're looking for. Say, for example, I'm looking for legal. You'll find that there is a question called legal status or a legal indicator. Clicking on that will take you to that particular piece of information.